fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. <laughs> Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question, and here's one the happy people have to say. You bet we're eating our Wheaties out west, including the champs. Take Eddie Matthews, born in Texarkana, Texas, and a great slugger for the Milwaukee Braves. He got a Texas start and a Wheaties start. Been eating them for years. And there's Gene Littler from California, one of the best pro golfers in the game. Listen. How he socks them off the tee. You bet Gene's a Wheaties champ. Been eating them since he was seven. A He-Man breakfast for champs and gonna be champs. Why, there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Keep on eating your Wheaties and you'll be doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-do
That engine over there looks familiar. You know who he is? Ah, oh, his name's Tonto. It's all Tonto. I know. No wonder he looks familiar. He's a Lone Ranger's pal. Hey, huh? Pony, are you sure? Dead sure. Those two smashed the gang I used to work with. I was lucky enough to escape. I got a score to settle with them. And I've got a score to settle with that Lone Ranger. He helped the law catch me in San Antonio. Hey, Stubb, you think he followed you here after you got out of jail? I don't know, Slam. We can't take chances. You and Pony follow Tonto. If he leads you to the Lone Ranger, kill them both. Right. Sure. As soon as I rent horses, I'll take the tender feet to the Brazos River. We'll camp on the east bank near Santa Ana's Ford. Yeah, yeah, I know the place. They're about eight miles east of here. Right. Get in touch with me after you've killed the Lone Ranger in Tondo. With habitual caution, Tonto took pains to conceal his trail. He rode in a devious route and finally reached the Lone Ranger's camp a few miles north of town. He told about the Easterners, then said, Where do you think them look for treasure? They'll likely search along the east bank of the Brazos River, Tonto, near Santa Ana Ford. That's where most treasure seekers go. Where Santa Ana Ford? About five miles south of Comanche Ford. That's where Santa Ana, the Mexican revolutionist, is said to have put $100,000 in gold into cannon barrels and rolled them into the Brazos River. Uh Plenty people look for gold. Yes, and the quicksand swallowed many of them just as they may have swallowed the gold. Those young Easterners might be in danger from quicksand. Well, them hired guides. Oh, the guide probably knows the river. Uh, do you know his name? Ah, him Stubb Evans. Stubb Evans? That's right. A short, stocky man with a scar across his nose. That's right. What's the matter? Otto, Stubb Evans is a crook. He just finished a jail term for armed robbery. Him got two friends in town. Him talk with them. When the Easterners are in danger, we better warn them. And then maybe them leave town by now. We'll ride east of the river, cross it at Comanche Ford, then ride down the east bank toward Santa Ana Ford. Somewhere along the east bank, we should find those Easterners. You must not be looking clouds. And a big storm comes. Yes, we better break camp at once. The Lone Ranger and Toto quickly packed their gear and started east toward the river. In the meantime, Slam and Pony had lost the trail of Tonto, and in trying to find it, rode northeast to the top of the hill. Oh, oh, there, oh, there. there they drew rain, while Slam looked through binoculars. Pony studied the black clouds in the sky. It's getting mighty dark. There's a big storm brewing. Hey, Pony, I see that engine. Yeah? I see two horses. Yeah, one's Tonto. Riding this way with a man on a white horse. The Lone Ranger rides a white horse. You tell if that horseman's wearing a mask? Uh, no, he's too far away. I bet he is a lone ranger. Why do you think they're coming this way? They're following a trail that leads to the old Comanche Ford. What's them tend to cross the river? What'll we do? Plug them? Ah, no, it's getting too dark. We might miss them. Then they'd get us. Here's the rain. A regular cloudburst. Pony, I know how to get rid of the lone ranger and his partner, and with no risk. How? The Comanche Ford is marked by two buffalo skulls on post. What of it? It's safe to cross the river between the posts. But above and below the fort are beds of quicksand. We still don't savvy. All we have to do is move the post. And this downpour, the Lone Ranger and Tana won't notice a change. They'll ride into the quicksand. Good. Let's get the Comanche forward. Right. Come on, get up there. Get up, get up. Unaware that they headed toward a death trap, the Lone Ranger and Tonto followed the trail to the river, then rode a short distance downstream before finding the marker posts. Looking toward the opposite shore, they drew rain. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. See posts on far side river? I can barely see them. We cross river now? Yes, the sooner we... What matter? Tonto, with the buffalo skulls on the posts. Uh-huh. Me see him. Comanche Indian put them there. Indians always point buffalo skulls toward the east, toward the rising sun. That's right. And them skulls point south. The skulls are fastened solidly to the post. I wonder if... Uh, what do you think? The post may have been moved. Easy, steady, big fella. This man, Toto, we'll examine them closely. Easy, easy, fella. Maybe this not for Maybe post moved south. That's possible, but... Toto, 
Here are boot marks of two men. Uh, here marks the horses. The marks must have been made recently or the rain would have washed them away. You think men move close? I think so, but we'll make certain of it. A short distance upstream, the masked man and Toto found the holes where the posts had been. The storm has partially filled in the holes, Toto. I'm sure this is where the posts belong. We move them back here. Why them move? I don't know. The men who moved them will have to answer that. We we'll look for those men after we warn the Easterners about Stub Evans. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Diving Doris is 13, and she is a diving queen. She can do a flip because she knows she's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, she's got go power. There she goes. She's feeling her Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. That's a mighty good idea for you. Just make sure you eat a big bowl of Cheerios and milk every breakfast, and you'll get go power, too. Because a Cheerios breakfast is loaded with proteins, vitamins, and minerals. The very things that help build healthy bodies, strong bones, good red blood, and muscles. Why, they'd be the sort of breakfast you'd go for even if they didn't taste so good. And they do taste delicious. Cheerios are a real oat cereal, already cooked with that delicious toasted oat flavor. So that's for you. Swell-tasting Cheerios and milk for Go Power. Eat them every morning and you'll hear... She's feeling her Cheerios. Now to continue. By the time the posts were in their proper places, the rain had stopped and the sky was clear. The Easterners and their guide had reached the east bank near Santa Ana Ford in time to pitch a tent before the storm began. After the downpour, Stubb remained in camp, while Bob and Larry set out on foot to explore the riverbank. Wait, Bob. Look ahead. Something moving through the underbrush. Horse. And a masked man. There's an Indian following him out of the thicket. Bob, that's the Indian we saw in town. I want to talk to you men. Hello, Tano. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Don't be alarmed because of my mask. Uh, this man won't help you. Him, Lone Ranger. What? The Lone Ranger? Ah, maybe you hear him. Oh, yes. Even in New York, we've heard of the Lone Ranger. My name's Bob Cass. Then you must be Larry Gaines. Yes. Toto told me about you. Oh, where's your guide? Uh, in camp near Santa Ana Ford. Is his name Stub Evans? Yes. Why? He's a crook. A crook? I've never known him to work for an honest living. He's working for us for a dollar a day. Probably in hope of getting a chance to rob you. Oh. Mm-hmm. Now I see why Evans asked so many questions. Questions? Yes. While we were in our tent during the storm, he seemed very interested in our plans. He probably was trying to find out how much cash we had. Did you tell him? Yes. We told him we had only a couple of hundred dollars between us. Larry. We also told him about our clue to the hiding place of the treasure. Yeah. You might as well forget the treasure. Uh, you're probably right unless that tree is farther north. What tree? We're looking for a big cottonwood tree along the east bank of the river. There's no growth larger than brushwood between here and Comanche Ford. That settles it. We'll dismiss our guide. Just a minute. Uh, what is the tree to do with your treasure hunt? Tell him, Bob. Well, you see, my grandfather was an officer on Santa Ana's staff. He saw the gold-filled cannon barrels rolled into the river. At that point, there was a big cottonwood. Grandfather cut his initials into the trunk. He came back here years later to look for the treasure, but he couldn't find the tree. And neither can we. The only big trees we've seen are over there on the far side of that ravine. Some of those are cottonwoods. Yes, but they're too far away. We're looking for one on the riverbank. Oh, I'm curious about that ravine. It might once have been the bed of the Brazos River. Do you think so? Well, it's possible. Rivers have often taken a new course after a flood. The river went through that ravine at the time the gold was hidden. If it did, that's the place where your grandfather carved his initials in the trunk of a cottonwood. And that's where Santa Anna hid the gold. Let's look for that tree. If we find it, we need picks and shovels. You bet we will. I'll go back to camp and get them. While you're looking for the tree. Good idea. Bring back the horse. Right. I'll meet you in the ravine. We'll be there. <laughs> Thank you. 
Meanwhile, Slam and Pony had crossed the Santa Ana Ford and joined Stub Evans. The three crooks moved a short distance away from the tent to a place where they'd be concealed by brushwood while they compared notes. Pony told about moving the guideposts after he and Slam had sighted the Lone Ranger and Tonto. So, as far as we know, the Lone Ranger and his pal are dead. Did you see them right into the quicksand? No, no, we didn't stay around. Uh, they're dead, all right. Well, I'm glad they're out of our way. Now, what about the tenderfeet? Have they got cash enough to make it worthwhile robbing them? Only a couple of hundred. But I found out something else. What? They've got a real clue to the location of the buried treasure. Yeah? Huh? Yeah. They got it straight from one of Santa Ana's men. He was a grandfather, one of the Easterners. Yeah. I think those greenhorns are going to find that treasure. And if they do? Yeah. We take it. Well, what about the Easterners? They'll have a bad accident and get swallowed by quicksand. That's the way that I've... Yeah, it sounds like one of the horses in the camp. I'll look through the brushwood, see what's going on. Hey, who's that? One of the Easterners. He saddled the horses, and now he's tying picks and shovels behind the saddle. That means something. It must mean the boys have found the place to dig. Get ready to go. We'll follow him. Leading Bob's horse, Larry rode along the top of the sloping bank of the ravine until he reached his partner, who stood with a lone ranger and Tonto near an old cottonwood tree. Oh, 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 As Larry dismounted, Bob said, Larry, we've examined over a dozen trees so far. Well, if we do find the right one, we have the tools to dig. Did you see your guide? No. His horse and gear were in camp, but I didn't see him. See my copy. Yes, Tonto? Gear, old cut some trunk of tree. Bark healed over. Look. Larry, the initials are C. Grandfather's initials. This is the tree. The tree stood at the top of the former riverbank, which was a steep slope about 15 feet in height. Bob and Larry hurried down the slope and went to work on the riverbed with pick and shovel. The Lone Ranger and Tonto, standing on the top of the bank near Scout and Silver, watched with interest and without suspecting that three killers were approaching. Stub, Slam, and Pony had left their horses well back and made a stealthy approach on foot to a point from which they could peer through the brushwood and see the Lone Ranger and Tonto near the big tree. Stub growled. You lied to me. You didn't kill the Lone Ranger and Tonto. We thought for sure they'd ride into the quicksand. You two get your guns ready. Stub, I'm wait and see if the squitters find the treasure. Sure I am. But when they find it, or decide they're not going to find it, we'll open fire. Stub, they're going to the bottom of the ravine. We'll move right over close to the horses where the Lone Ranger and Tonto were standing. Then when we open fire, we'll be within 20 feet of them. Quietly, the three crooks moved ahead until they were on the bank almost directly above the treasure hunters. Low so they can't see us, right? The Lone Ranger and Tonto widened and deepened the hole in the ground. Then the masked man's spade struck metal. I struck something. Big here, Tonto. Uh, it sounded like metal. I see something. Could be the barrel of a cannon. We'll soon know. It is a cannon barrel. Here's the front end. Clear away that dirt tunnel. Uh, the other cannon must be here, too. That's right. They were all rolled into the river at the same place. There, that's enough, Tuttle. Now we see a golden cannon. The conversation was followed closely by Stubb and his companions on the bank near the horses. Slam whispered. We'll jump up and fire when you give the word, Stubb. Get ready. The end of the cannon was plugged with wood. It's all rotted. Can you get it out? Yes, I have most of it out. Guns ready? All right. set. None of the outlaws noticed that Silver was increasingly uneasy and watching them closely. Now I can reach into the barrel. What's that? Find anything? Yes. Look at this. Go! We found it! Let him have it. <laughs> As the outlaws rose, Silver charged, plunging against all three before they could fight their guns, and their shots went wild. As the Lone Ranger and Tonto ran up the bank, their guns were barking. 
Cub's gun arm was smashed by a bullet. Tony collapsed and dropped his gun when a bullet drilled his thigh. Slam threw aside his weapon, raised his hands, and shouted... No, don't shoot. I surrender. So you plan to ambush us? No, wait. Listen, mister, wasn't my idea. Was it your idea to move the guidepost at Comanche Ford? Oh, no, Pony thought of that. He thought you two would ride in a quicksand. Oh, you murdering crook. Haven't you pay for trying to kill us? My arm is broke. You're lucky to be alive. If I'd had a gun, you could use it like that masked man, I'd have put a bullet through your head. Let's kill these crooks right here. You don't mean that, Bob. I... No, I suppose I don't. We'll tie these men and dress their wounds. Then stand guard here while Connor rides to town for the sheriff. It was after dark when Toto returned from town, and bonfires lighted the area where the treasure had been found. The sheriff was with Toto, also several deputies and a heavy wagon. After the prisoners were handcuffed and placed on the wagon, the sheriff said, These crooks will be in jail for a long time for attempted murder. That's where they belong, Sheriff. What about the gold? Well, son, the men and I will help you dig it up and we'll take it into town for safekeeping. <laughs> you found it on government land. And I'm not up on the laws about buried treasure. But I'm sure you four gents will get a big share of it. Toto and I are not to share in it. Well, well, why not? If it hadn't been for you, we'd never have found it. Bob, I'm glad we were able to help you. Gold buried in the ground is of no use to anyone. But circulated, it will be a benefit to many people. Come on, Toto, our work is finished. Adios. Good night, well, boys, whether it's the capturing of crooks or the finding of buried treasure, the best man to have on your side is the Lone Ranger. copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Pendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.